To many, the Isle of Puerto Rico might seem like a tropical paradise. The tiny island, a territory of the United States, ranks tourism as its main industry. And it's easy to see why. With sunny beaches, beautiful vistas, and towering palm trees, tourists flock to Puerto Rico to enjoy some time away. A safe, serene refuge from the trials and tribulations of daily life. Yet, so it goes. There's always trouble in paradise. Our story begins in the small town of Canavanas in 1995. A farmer awakens one morning to encounter a horrific sight in his goat pen. An odd commotion attracts the farmer's attention. When the goats clear away as the farmer approaches, he sees one of his goats dead in a pile of leaves and hay. One of his goats had been killed sometime in the night. And while farm livestock can fall victim to random creatures in search of food, the farmer fears that this is no ordinary predator. He notices two dried puncture wounds on the dead goat's neck. Locally, there had been recent reports of livestock dying among farmers in the community. As many as 150 different reports over the prior year, far more than usual and the condition of the animals' bodies had all been described consistently. Two small puncture wounds in the chest or neck, like a vampire's bite mark. All of the dead goats had been entirely drained of their blood. With no other logical explanation, the local farming community turned to community church leaders for an answer. It was believed that some sort of wild, vampiric creature was responsible for the killings. Some believed the creature was an extraterrestrial. Others believed it to be an unholy demon. This was, of course, all speculation. But even absent an actual sighting, the legend of this mysterious creature would begin to take hold, sparking fear and intrigue even beyond the farming community. Reports of more dead goats continue to stream in to local media outlets, some more believable than others, leading a local radio DJ to coin the name El Chupacabra, which translates to the goat sucker. With locals growing nervous about the mysterious creature, the mayor of Canavanas vowed to take action. He determined that to protect his community, he must either capture or kill El Chupacabra. The mayor organizes a search party where local church officials, local farmers, and local law enforcement take to nearby streets, forests, and fields in search of the deadly creature. Unfortunately, the exhaustive search would yield no result. Over time, hysteria surrounding the elusive Chupacabra would wane as goat killing subsided and life in Canavanas and surrounding areas would gradually return to normal. But this would not be the last the world would see of El Chupacabra. The next year, a quaint rural Mexican town hundreds of miles away would be plagued with an alarmingly similar situation. The year is 1996 and numerous animal deaths are being reported. Some are goats, but some are pets, all with similar characteristics. Bodies left almost untouched, with just two puncture wounds in the chest or neck, and the blood completely drained. While initial reports originated from the rural farming town just north of Mexico City, more reports started to flow in soon after. This time, further north, all the way to the U.S. border in Texas. And each incident seemed to share similar circumstance. Again, the bodies were intact. The only evidence of damage, the two distinct holes and complete lack of blood. This characteristic proved baffling to scientists. 
This would eliminate the possibility of a wild animal attack from a common predator, such as a bobcat or coyote. The remains would most certainly have been carried off, or at least partially consumed. This presentation has only fueled the mystery surrounding this elusive creature. Over the years, sightings of the chupacabra have spread, not just in Mexico, but across the world. Reports of blood-drained animals that match the chupacabra's attack profile have been recorded in places as far as Maine, Chile, and even Russia. The chupacabra is an unusual case in the world of cryptozoology. Not only is it the most geographically varied as far as sightings are concerned, but also varied in terms of its physical appearance. Witnesses over the years seem to describe two main and distinct versions of the creature. One is that of a large wild dog with a pronounced spinal ridge, gaunt features, and sunken eyes. The other describes the animal as lizard-like with large black eyes and an arched back covered in spikes or quills. Whatever the case, both descriptions have one distinct feature in common. That is, a set of gigantic fangs, presumably used to drain the blood of its prey. In spite of such a ferocious appearance and insidious reputation, no reports exist of the creature actually attacking humans. Nonetheless, over the years, El Chupacabra has become something of an irreverent yet light-hearted mascot for Puerto Rico much the same way that Mothman has become an icon for its hometown of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And since 1995, the creature has inspired countless forms of merchandise and appeared as a subject in numerous films. But what is El Chupacabra? Is it a demon? Is it an alien? Is it some unrecognized animal native to the tropics? Such little evidence exists that science, let alone pop culture, can't really explain it. Some scientists have theorized that those who have seen El Chupacabra have mistaken the creature for a diseased common animal, possibly a coyote with mange. The parasitic disease can cause hair loss in animals and feral behavior, which would explain the dog-like descriptions of some Chupacabra sightings. And while this could account for some sightings, it does not account for all of them. What about the more outlandish descriptions of the creature? Scientists counter more sensational accounts with the possibility that the dead animals were killed by snake or spider venom. Many remain unconvinced, however, as these theories ignore the lack of blood and wounds consistently appearing on the neck and chest rather than the animal's legs or ankles. Others would say that El Chupacabra is a product of science. One theory circulating is that the creature is an escaped scientific experiment gone wrong, and that the military knows of its existence and is working diligently to prevent information from leaking to the public. But perhaps the most interesting connection is El Chupacabra's similarities to another creature of legend. Descriptions of El Chupacabra bear a resemblance to the Mayan demon, Kamazots. Kamazots was believed to be the god of night and ritual sacrifice. But rather than a terrestrial dog or lizard-like creature, he's most often depicted in the form of a gargantuan fanged bat that was believed to feast on blood. According to legend, a pair of brothers were traveling through the underworld when they took shelter in the creature's cave. When one of the brothers emerged the next morning to see if the sun had risen, Kamazots violently decapitated him, ceremoniously displaying his head as a trophy while sipping on his blood. The parallels between Kamazots and El Chupacabra do draw interest, despite differences in the two legendary creatures' physical depictions. Given El Chupacabra's link to Mexico, the site of many of the creature's more recent sightings, it's possible that the two creatures are linked, if not somehow one and the same. 
If the theories are correct, it would mean that El Chupacabra is far more ancient than previously thought. But whatever the answer, the legend of El Chupacabra remains just as mysterious today as when it began not all that long ago. In less than 30 years, El Chupacabra has managed to capture the imagination of cryptid fans around the world. My friends, until the next feeding. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans creating documentary-style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. And don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, monsters, or legendary creatures doesn't matter here. Just believe in the possibility. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.